Alright, welcome back guys. Today we are working on more advanced ME processes. Last time we left off with this, today we're going to show you how to import and export fluids and also make the ME craft items for you. And I brought along somebody to help me with this. Hey, dude. This guy. Hey. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to this stuff. So I figured it'd be good help. Alright, let's get yeah. started. Alright, so here's everything we're going to craft. Animatrox, if you could take it away, please. Alright, you're going to need a... Well, you don't need an ME crafting monitor. It is a useful tool to see if what your crafting thing is missing. You're going to need some ME cable to connect it. You're going to need an ME crafting CPU, ME assembler containment wall, ME heat vent, and ME pattern provider. And ME blank... Or ME pattern encoder. So let's take all this stuff out. And this furnace and interface and pulverizer we will be working on in a bit. Alright, so we got all our things we have to make. What next? We place our ME crafting monitor a there. Crafting monitor, okay. And you place an ME cable behind it okay. to connect it. And you can see what you're going to craft. And you're okay. going to need to place... So when I open this crafting monitor... What's going to show up here? It's going to show up what you're trying to make. It's going to show up what we're trying to make. Alright, so we'll open that back up in a bit when we try to make things. Alright, so right, what else? You're going to need this. I would advise to start off with a basic, the smallest one you can make. Okay. For new players. Like, if you're just starting a new world. That'd be cheaper too, right? Yep. It's cheaper. It takes less materials. And you're going to want to place an ME pattern provider or I mean heat vent right on all sides on every side so in every blank spot and in the middle you're on going to put a emmy pattern provider emmy pattern provider and you're going to want to put an emmy heat vent right on the front okay and then and we can open it up and, and does this where the blank patterns go no no well, okay yes but first, you're gonna need one of these an okay. ME pattern encoder. All right. You're gonna want to put your blank patterns in this top corner up here. Okay. And then you put your what you want to make in here. Sure. And then we so click. Say I, okay. Say I wanted to make that, I would encode. You take it out, and you go over here and place it in. Okay. And then you would walk over to your ME and say diamond block. So this. This crafts one block of diamond with nine blocks, or nine diamonds. Okay, and then we go where? Over to this ME. Sure. Hit, right click hit, on it. Hit craft. And then, can I make one diamond block? Yes, you can. Begin. Oh, and it made a diamond block for me. And would you do that again, please? Sure. So I'm going to click the middle mouse button this time. Yes. And then, also guys, you can click how many you want to craft. Or I think you can type in how many you want to craft. So yes, and then indeed. begin. And, and then you go up to your ME craft monitor and it says, "Oh no, you're missing nine diamonds." Okay. So it, okay, that's nice. So if you're missing a material, you're making a lot of steps in a, like a windmill or something. It would show you what you're missing with like quartz. And if you put nine the diamonds in that you need, it automatically, and it automatically crafts, crafts it. it as soon as you get it. All right, that's cool. All right. So is that it for this? This is all you can do for this, but okay. this is the smallest one you can make. I would advise making a 4x4. Four four. Is that better? Yes, because it gives you way more space. Okay. It gives you more pages, I believe, right? Yes. Okay. Well, that all depends on how many pattern providers you put in. Okay. You could put one pattern provider in. And it would give you one page. So the pattern providers are what goes in the middle, right? Yes. Okay, on the second layer and the third layer on this one. Or you can put uh, ME crafting CPUs in, and that will speed up your crafting process. So it makes it go faster, alright, cool. So in this one, I would want to put in four ME CPUs and then four pattern providers. Okay. And then cool, close cool. that up. And, and that gives you four pages. Gives you four pages. Wow, that's quite a bit better than this one, actually. 
and you can make that up to eight pages. It would craft a little slower, though. Okay. So the bigger it is, the slower it goes? The bigger it is, the more patterns you can have, and the more CPUs you put in to speed okay. it up. And would you say this takes a lot of power-wise? No. No? This it's pretty... does not take much power at all. I think the whole ME system in general is pretty power-sufficient. It's pretty... If you go over to the ME controller, it shows you how much power per tick you are using. Right. Yes. That's pretty good, actually. That's very reasonable. Everything that's attached to this ME. Okay, that's very nice. All right, so I guess we're gonna move on to how what? To smelt how, to pulverize. how to smelt and how to pulverize? All right. You need a pulverizer, an ME interface, and an ME redstone furnace. And you need a power source for those. Okay. So I'm gonna make it right here because sure. it's convenient. You're going to want to place down your red redstone furnace. <laughs> You're going to want a pulverizer so you get double your ores. You're going to need an... Sorry for that. You're going to need a ME interface on both of these. Okay, so what do these interfaces do? These interfaces, you have to put the pattern in that you want. So the pattern for the cr crafting item, right? Yes. Okay. And you're going to need a power source for both of these. For the interfaces as well? No, you do not need a power okay, source. Okay, just for the pulverizer and furnace. But you are going to need to connect them. And to the need, enemy, okay. You're going to need one import bus. So this is where the import buses come in to import it into the ME system, correct? Yes. Okay. So you do that. Oops. Sure. And you would have to set this to output. Okay. So it outputs into the ME. And then you're going to need one export bus. Alright. To put it into the redstone furnace. So that's all connected now. Okay. And then if you want to use a pulverizer, you do the same thing. You put a ME export bus. And you put export an ME bus. import bus. So the export buses will take items out of the yes. crafting terminal or access terminal or whatever you choose. It is very confusing because they sound like they're reverse. Yes. So you're going to want to set the input and outputs of the machine to be on the side of the export bus and the import bus. Right? Yes. So, once and you got that done, you're going to place your patterns in. Which, you're going to go over to the ME encoder okay and we're gonna clear that right yeah you're gonna clear okay and you're gonna put one or an ore in it and it's not gonna say it's gonna make anything okay but you have to put a pulverized iron in sure and you hit encode now if you go to put it in here it shows it red because it won't work in there okay so you have to take that out and you have to put it in the emmy interface of the pulverizer okay so now when i put one iron ore in here all right, we're back. We had a little technical difficulty there. Um, so we're just going to show the inputs again. The input must be on the top to for the pulverizer to connect to the interface to see what it is going to process. The output must be on the back or wherever you place your import bus. And the input must be on wherever you place the export bus. So if you would go ahead and put an iron ore in that ME system over there and click craft for an iron ingot, Pulverized iron. Sure. And there we go. The iron ore gets put in here through the ME cable. And it will be exported out back into the ME. And now to make the furnace, you would put one pulverized iron into the ME coder. Okay. And you'd put one iron ingot into the blank there. slot there, right? Okay. And, and then you hit encode. encode. And then you bring this over and place it in the ME interface. And okay. you set your furnace to input on top, export, wherever, wherever you, you have import, your export bus would be import. importing, so blue, and export, er, sorry, import bus will be orange for and the you output. you just go over here and you press craft and you could do that. Begin. And then it's going to automatically make you an iron ingot. So let's and just run over this real quick. Let's grab a stack of iron ore, we'll say. I got one in there. Oh, you already have a stack in there? Okay, yep. perfect. 
and then we're going to click our middle mouse button plus 64 and then begin so this is going to start flooding in look at that right there and you can look up in your crafting monitor and it shows you how much it has left yes. it'll show you how many more ingots also to cancel as you can see down here to cancel a job you just hold shift and then left click and then it'll cancel stop and it'll stop making them yeah so i think that's about it for that you know, would you say yeah for that part all right we're going to move on to show you how to import and export fluids out of your me all right we're back we're going to make the fluid terminal now and how what do we need for that all right to start off we're going to need an me fluid terminal you're going to need a different kind of drive so you're going to need an me and whatever amount of storage you'd like so i chose 64k for this and a fluid me 64k fluid storage um there is a difference between the me 64k fluid drive and the 64 storage this is only going to store items this will store fluids the max you can store is five fluids unfortunately it would be nice if that was higher um but anyways we're going to need an export bus to be able to export I or fluids out of the me terminal and then we're going to need an import bus to import them into the fluid terminal. And also we're just going to need some ME cable, um, a tank of any choice, so basically any kind of tank you want, a wrench, and a bucket for this. Alright, we'll be right back. We'll get it set up. Alright, and we are back. We are going to put this fluid into the ME fluid terminal. So what you're going to do first, put your 64k fluid storage into the ME drive along with the other storage. This is so you obviously have a place to put the fluid, otherwise it's not going to be imported. So you're going to want to connect it with an ME cable and a fluid terminal. And as you can see, we'll set this to put to make it go a little bit faster. And it drains right in. Also, just a quick little tip, you can set the moving speed of the liquid to be... 20 millibuckets or Minecraft buckets, 250 or a thousand. Obviously, I'd recommend a thousand because it's faster. And there what you go. There's things? your 64 buckets of lava. What are these things down in the bottom left corner? Oh yes, right. Let me grab my bucket. So if you ever wanted a bucket of whatever you have in your fluid terminal, so say you have lava and you wanted a bucket of lava, you can place your bucket right here. And it gives you a bucket of lava, subtracting one bucket of lava from your total count. And if you simply want to place it back in, you just put it there, and voila, <laughs> you got an empty bucket. Alright, so I'm going to quickly show you how to get it out of your ME system. We'll get rid of this real quick. We're going to want to place an export bus on the top, right there an ME cable connecting it right there that'll do and so for the export buses they work a little bit different than the import buses you're going to want to place a bucket of whatever you want liquid to come out of the ME fluid storage so you go ahead select your lava or select your fluid that you want to export right there and place your bucket in and there you go. Right. You're filling your tank with your liquid. And you can just wrench that and take it wherever you want it to go. That is pretty much it for the fluids. I think we covered everything today, didn't we? I think so. I think we did a pretty good job. All right. That's Stay about tuned it. for more videos. We will be, yes, we will be providing more advanced processes again on more ME videos and other Feed the Beast tutorials. Alright, thanks for watching guys. See ya.